always say that after the elections, only after and it will be useless. So it is important to have these kind of discussions where we discuss policies even if they are rejected at the moment. The Public Policy and Research Institute of Zimbabwe, PRIS, led by former MTCT member Dr. Gordon Moyo, held a lecture on the 2023 harmonized elections. The theme of the lecture was political tolerance, violence-free and policy-oriented campaigns. Presenting the lecture was research fellow at PRIS, senior lecturer at Lupane State University, as well as research associate at the University of Johannesburg, Dr. Wayne Malinga. Dr. Malinga's lecture was based on the following themes tolerance within political parties, violence-free campaigns, strategies to prevent and manage electoral violence, policy-oriented campaigns. The Institute had invited several political parties, but many never turned up. The only visible political players were from the revived Zimbabwe African People's Union, ZAPU. Because of the snap to this lecture, some political players who attended espoused this as political intolerance. Members from Chamisa Slate Citizens Coalition for Change trooped in when Dr. Gordon Moyo was saying his closing remarks. Dr. Malinga said that a court for political parties and candidates through the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission must promote conditions that are conducive to a free and fair election and a climate of tolerance in which there will be no fear of coercion, intimidation or reprisals. On violence-free campaigns, Dr. Malinga said that peaceful and credible elections are essential for democracy. Therefore, all parties should desist from the use of violence. People's rights should be respected at all times. Dr. Malinga posed questions to political parties and candidates on policy campaigns. He asked, do campaign promises matter? As an aspiring MP or councillor, is your campaigning concentrating on issues that affect the people of your area, particularly from Bulawayo? Does your campaign promise to tackle the issues of water, electricity problems, unemployment, youth bulge or surge, city cleanliness, vendors and criminal activities? One speaker bemoaned the impartiality of Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, the security sector, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, the judiciary, and the state media is totally intolerant. To what extent is it tolerant? Because if ZEC itself is not independent enough, that, is, that amounts to intolerance in other ways. If the security sector is, uh, we see partisan application of the law, I'm sure lately we've seen that the other parties, they want to hold the rallies, the rallies are uh, sort of um, disturbed and they end up with Asakwanis who ends in Klamath. And when the same parties, this is Panjani, so CIMT20, the police at times tell you our hands are tight. So that is another form of intolerance as well. Another speaker emphasized on the issue of molarity deficiency and implored that immolarity must be addressed first before any meaningful development can take place in the country. I think there is an issue of morality deficiency in this country. 
I think it's a, it's, it's, we can't do that as morally. Uh, 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 there is death of morality or there is definition of morality. morality. So there is no shame in our politicians. Uh, there is no shame in those that are in uh, elite, elite institutions. Um, uh, they, 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 are, they don't feel any guilt in doing anything. So for me, we need to address the issue of morality uh, first before we talk about anything. Uh, if we can do that, then therefore we have politicians who will talk about policy issues, not populist issues. We will have politicians who will uh, encourage violence, violent free elections. But if that is not there, I think we haven't started. A participant from Women in Leadership Development espoused that human rights defenders must be protected. We need to record as Zimbabwe to say, no, this is the safety measure that we are putting. Even to put it at policy level to say, it is policy that we have a mechanism that protects our human rights defenders because they are the most vulnerable in this season. Another woman touched on the emotive issue of the injustices of Kukurahundi. She also emphasized on the government's institutions that she said were not independent at all. Is it really possible for us to talk of tolerance when we have not healed from the past injustices, when we have not healed from issues of Kukurahundi, particularly in this region? Is it possible for us to talk about tolerance when we know that we have institutions that are not independent? Though our constitution speaks to issues of independence of the commission, such as SEC, but in reality we know that there's interference, there's no accountability, there's no transparency. Dr. Malinga responded to contributions with the following answers. A state thrives on apparatus. I think there was a question when somebody asked the actual players of violence. The apparatus are there for us to see. That is why a state is hell-bent on ensuring that there is division. And the problem with the state, it ends up creating a form of kingdom. That is one of the weaknesses of a state. And the state tries to be an independent political entity. And it divorces itself from people. I was not privy to bring out these issues during my presentation, as I was trying to be neutral and civil. <laughs> but however, it is also quite important to pinpoint out some of these um, issues. Um, I think the questions are very divergent. Um, there was a question on colonial legacy. At the present moment, it is very difficult. And it is not only a unique situation in Zimbabwe, but across the entire continent where colonial legacy still thrives, where those who garner up and manage to get power, they are so individualistic and egocentric to a point that they only think about themselves and no one else. That is where the problem of colonial legacy has led us to. Instead of uniting a broken nation, it has been divided into pieces. And for harmonization to be there, we are still a long way from it. Transparent in this country. Um, I think um, there was even some questions on moral deficiency. I think uh, when we look at our current problems, 
We are well beyond being moral. I love, I love raising this issue, especially when it comes to corruption issues. As I say, love is interested in this because we are way beyond that. And you can look at these repercussions and how they have affected today's society. They are even still visible up until now. And they even have cascaded down to issues to do with um, the electoral system, the electoral process as well. Um, I think there was also even uh, the allowance of CSOs. The unfortunate part is that now some CSOs are married to the very same system. In his closing remarks, Dr. Gordon Moyo challenged the electorate to be careful when choosing whom to vote for, so that there will be no regrets later on. We always say that after the elections, only after and it will be useless. So it is important to have these kind of discussions where we discuss policies even if they are rejected at the moment. Bringing you Elections 263 is Innocent Nube, Zim GPC News.